So have you ever been Wait. what? Are you gonna introduce it? You don't have to sorry, <laughs> we're recording. Sorry, YouTube. Um, no, we have like the we have the new intro that we like drop at the beginning. Yeah. But are you like you still should probably do the like what we're talking about? Okay. Or is that what this is? And I'm dumb. That's what this is. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this outline. I'm sorry. It's, it's fine. fine. So Do you have docs up? I'm sorry. Do yeah, you... I have it up now. Okay. I, just, okay. I, hadn't, I hadn't read it. <laughs> have you ever been seeing someone? Things are going great. You have so much in common and you get along really well. Then you're talking with a friend and they ask, so are you guys official? And you go to this person you're seeing and find out that they like keeping it casual or don't like labels. But here's the thing. You might not be in a relationship, but you are for sure in a situationship. These can be stressful and confusing for everyone, but they can also be fun. It's all about communicating well. And the key to navigating your situationship is knowing the different kinds and finding out which kind you're in. And we are here today to help. There's a ton of different types, but today we're going to go over some of the most common ones and talk about if we've ever been in any of these types. So I think we're just going to kind of switch back and forth and like you'll, you'll start us off and then we'll just, you know, tell us. Okay. Are we going to talk about each Oh, sorry. Are we going to talk about each one as we go or should I yes. wait until the end and then? Yes. Wait till the end of each. We'll okay. have like each little section is about certain okay. types. Yeah. All right. I love so you can this. This will be a off. fun one, I feel like, especially because yeah. I'm often the one that's like, I don't like labels or like some of the traditional things. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the first type we've got is the convenience situation ship. It's often based on convenience or lack of time rather than any real emotional connection. Most of the time in this type of situation ship, both people just happen to run into each other. Little effort is put in for planning things. Both people are really busy and have full lives and they never rearrange plans to make time for each other. Have you ever been in a convenience situation ship? I don't, I'm trying to think. Maybe, I don't know. I I wouldn't, the only I guess thing I, I wouldn't can... have labeled it a situationship. I feel like that's just like a type of relationship dynamic. Like to me, a situationship almost I think of, and maybe I'm defining this wrong or jumping ahead, so I'm sorry, but I always think of a situationship as something where expectations are not aligned. So like maybe one person feels like it's more or could be more and the other person is like, no, and they won't commit or... um. I don't know. Like, I feel like situationships often imply that there's a lot of gray area and mm-hmm. somebody, at least one person wants more. Not and always. So- and we talk about this too, about how like some of them, people are fine with it being that way without the labels yeah. and just, you know, the only thing I could think of was this one was like, I don't know when we were like partying all the time way back in the day, like there was never anybody that we were like, like I was going home with or anything. But just you have that like certain friend that you see out and you just hang out with when you're out all the time. You know what I mean? Like, yes, no, I've definitely not had friends planning like- on needing that person, but you just happen to be there. Yes, I've definitely had friends like that where I wouldn't like maybe we didn't make each other like a priority or put effort into hanging out with each other outside of stuff. But if we had mutual friends or hung out together or even like made out occasionally, like, yeah, I think that would fit the, fit yeah. the bill. Yeah. yeah. So sure. The passionate situationship is when two people have a really strong connection and lots of chemistry, but they aren't willing to take things more seriously. This could be because one person isn't ready to commit or because the situationship is just physical and they go into it knowing that their lifestyles aren't compatible. So that kind of sounds more like what you were talking about, where one might be ready and the other's not so much. Well, to me, the first one is like, almost more of like a friendship that maybe there's like a little bit of flirtation with or something where this one feels more like because you said like a passionate situation (laughs) honestly this one just sounds more like a friends with benefits kind of that's one of the situation shifts that we'll talk about oh is it (laughs) i know so so many of them like really align with each other i feel like 
Yeah, I probably had this situation where I was seen someone although I feel like it's usually the guy that like doesn't want to lock things down um and the one that I'm thinking of at least it was the guy really wanted to be like monogamous relationship escalator you know Mm -hmm. full speed ahead and that wasn't what I wanted so maybe that counts yeah yeah I would say so okay and if you had a good connection and some chemistry, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have had this, but sounds fun. <laughs> okay. The next one is friends with benefits situation ship, which is when two people have each other as a shoulder to lean on. Uh, and someone who they can trust to be there for them. It's a unique crossover between friendship and a more sexual relationship. Both people enjoy spending time with each other inside and outside of the bedroom. Have you ever had a friends with benefits? Um, One kind of comes to mind, but I feel it. And this was years and years and years ago, the one where I had to like walk a block. But I feel like if you've listened to any of our episodes, you know what we're talking about. Sometimes you got to walk a block to suck some cock. cock. <laughs> But the thing is, I feel like he was the one that was getting, like, it was way more beneficial for him than it was for me. So, but I mean, still, like, he was benefiting from it, so. (laughs) Or do you think that was more like the one where, the one before, where you felt like there was chemistry, but he didn't want to commit? No, there was no chemistry. Like, (laughs) there was none. There wasn't chemistry. We didn't, like there wasn't like a strong connection you just really wanted him to like you yeah I was just really immature and young and like (laughs) what about you um I've had I would say like probably one like friends with benefit um yeah it was yeah so I couldn't hit the unmute. Okay. The purely physical situationship is where there is nothing else between two people besides a physical connection. No strings attached. And this allows for each person to have their own life outside of the arrangement that, and it's typically short term. So I kind of feel, I feel like that's almost like the same thing as friends with benefits, but. Well, friends with benefits friends. to me implies like there's some friendship outside of sex and potentially that it would be like that you would stay friends after versus like this sounds like a short to me this sounds more like very casual sex and I think people define casual sex differently when I think of casual sex I think of something that is like really short term without really much of a connection outside of sex and typically like a one night stand or something like that um so I would say I probably have done that but it's not um, it's definitely not like a relationship dynamic that I seek or really feel For like sure. it's very fulfilling. <laughs> I feel like if I was single in my twenties, I probably would have had some of these, but you know, <laughs> don't get married guys. I'm just kidding. You can cut that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. Uh, the one-sided situation ship happens when only one person wants to make take things more seriously while their partner doesn't feel the same way. One pulls away from the relationship while the other is often clinging to hope that the other will come around. This type of situation ship can be difficult to navigate, and it typically leaves you feeling hurt and confused. A lot of times a person who – the person who wants more out of the relationship might keep their feelings to themselves or – out of a fear of rejection this sounds honestly it sounds a lot like the I know we had an episode a while back on attachment styles and it reminded me of that attachment the insecure or anxious attachment style and the avoidant which often the two tend to like attract be attracted to each other or like the anxious attachment style person will often seek someone with an avoidant attachment style and that's kind of what it made me think of for sure have you ever been in this dynamic? Honestly, maybe this seems a lot more like the one I was just talking about where like there wasn't really a connection I wanted there to be. 
<laughs> but he was like, no. Otherwise, yeah, uh, have you? So I feel like there's almost overlap to the other one that I was talking about where the one guy that wanted like more and I think definitely had stronger feelings than I did in that situation. But um, I don't know. To, again, it's like that definition of situationship, I think, is what's throwing me off because I always think of situationship as meaning there's not clear communication. And in all of the relationships that I've had, I really try to have that very clear communication so that it's not, I think, it, you know, the one that I'm talking about though, I think he still got his hopes up and. Well, and know, just like, because kind of you're very clear there may, if, if they're very like emotional and like invested in it, they're just going to hear what they want to hear. And that's true. you know what I mean? So like, you can only do so much. You can even be like, write it out for them. But if they, that's, Maybe you said like something extra nice a month ago and they're just going to cling on to that and think, well, maybe she does really that's, like me. Like, you know, that's valid. And there are a lot of men who will, quite frankly, not really pay attention to what you say anyways. Like yeah. I've had <laughs> as, you know, up until, I mean, even recently situations where I've said things that were very clear and it was clear that the guy was kind of like very dismissive of it and he was like okay but like in his mind whatever he wanted was still how it was gonna go and so that can yeah, happen like maybe too. if he words it a different way he can kind of talk you into it and that's mm -hmm. that's not respecting boundaries so don't do that yeah <laughs> all right have the office that? what have you had that yeah like the the one I'd, I'd said a little while ago or I think mm -hmm. it maybe it was like I was more into it than he was, but yeah. The office situationship happens between two people that work at the same organization. This typically happens because it's convenient with two people spending most of their days together. And the office situationship can be extremely complicated, especially if things don't end well. Like you hear all the time people saying, oh, it's my work husband or my work wife or whatever. But like, sometimes I think there's more to it than that can be. Have you ever yeah. had this? Honestly, I don't think so, personally. I've witnessed it a lot. Like, when I was in high school, I worked at fast food, and everybody's fucking everybody in the freezer. And I'm not lying. Like, they're... <laughs> in the freezer? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I've, I've witnessed it a lot. Um, but I don't think that I've ever had it. I don't know. I mean, I've worked in salons mostly forever. You know what I mean? So it's like, and I'm, I'm straight. So I've mostly worked with women. Yeah. I don't know. Have you, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Just tell me like that. So I want to be very clear that the place that I work at now, absolutely not like not even <laughs> remotely. And I work from home now. So like, yeah, no, but, um, yeah, like uh, this is like a long time ago, but I did have a situation where, and I guess this would probably count as a situation ship because we never dated. There was gray area. Mm -hmm. I was a lot younger then. And it was, I'm like debating how many details I want to give. <laughs> All of them. But like, <laughs> long story short, the guy was technically my boss, but it was like, I don't know. It wasn't like that serious of a job. So it wasn't. I don't know. And we like hooked up and then it. I found out he had been dating this other girl that also worked there. And I don't know if he was still dating her when that happened or not. But then that got weird because then she was like all heartbroken. And I don't know if they had already broken up and she was just mad that it happened or what. And then his roommate tried to hook up with me, which I didn't hook up with his roommate too. But yeah, that was too many details. Anyways, next one. <laughs> Wait, you did or didn't hook up with the roommate? I did not hook up oh, with the Oh, okay, roommate. okay. No. Skimmed over that real no. fast. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not hook up with the roommate. I remember having a conversation with him and being like, well, I already hooked up with your roommate, so I feel like that's kind of fucked up. Like, Yeah. But also, I didn't really like him that much, and I was just really bad at saying that at that point in my life, so I had to, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let him down easy. Okay. This next one... The almost relationship situationship is where two people have reached a point that is 
close to a committed relationship. However, typically because of the timing not being right or they have other issues that they aren't really able to work through and make it official, many times these do eventually turn into real relationships. Mm. Have you had one of these? Honestly, I would say if anything, my it happened with my husband because we I'd kind of like seen him a little bit before and then when we started dating I just gotten out of a long-term relationship and I was like I don't want to be with anybody right now but that didn't work out for me so I would say yes I don't yeah what about you yes I have (laughs) yes and (laughs) because I'm always like I wasn't I didn't know I didn't know what topic we were talking about before we started recording today and so I hadn't like I always try to be really careful when it comes to like stories that involve other people Mm -hmm. about not saying things that's going to be identifying or like, you know. Yeah. So I would say yes that I have. I feel like I've had, I mean, because like an almost relationship is, there's one in particular that comes to mind that was like, not like recent, recent, but like within the last few years. Um, so yeah, I would say, okay. yeah. When two people really like each other, but are too afraid to admit it, they are in the in denial situation ship. Their fear of rejection or commitment keeps them from acknowledging their feelings. This type of situation ship can be extremely frustrating as neither person has the courage to take the first step, though it's clear they're drawn to each other. Have you been in one of these? maybe but then it's like that's kind of assuming that the other person had feelings you know what I mean like yeah, the yeah. other person doesn't I've definitely had situations where like I thought maybe there would be more but I didn't say anything and they didn't or mm-hmm. um or like it wasn't made super clear but then if they're not saying it I don't like to assume that it's because they were just too shy and got nervous you know what I mean like yeah maybe but maybe it's also just because they didn't like me (laughs) so I don't know (laughs) what is not to like (laughs) what about you um honestly I don't think so I I really don't think so nothing comes to mind at least okay yeah after the end of a long-term relationship, the next type of situationship typically occurs is a rebound situationship. Uh, people in this type of situationship are often looking for something to fill a void that has been left in their life. You aren't able to go into the new relationship with a clear head when emotions from your recent bl- breakup or when emotions from your recent breakup are clouding your feelings. You both will most likely end up being hurt in the long run when your actions are coming from a place of desperation. So this is when you're like, I guess on that, I just want to get over this person by getting under someone else. That's right. The best way to get over somebody. (laughs) Um, And I don't think I've really been in this situation. I have... I mean, arguably, I guess I've had guys that I've seen after or like when I was, you know, I don't know. But typically, I think by the time that I have actually broken up, am I freezing? Okay. Typically, by the time that I've actually broken up with someone, it's pretty done. And I don't like to go into like jump into new relationships when I don't have a clear headspace when I was younger I'm like there's one maybe that's coming to mind but even that I don't know I don't know if it counts honestly so. I, I feel like all of mine have just been rebound after rebound like I've just been I think if you've listened before like you know I've basically been haven't been single since I was like 12 and one relationship was always starting a couple days after another one. I just think it's really difficult for me to get over people, if that makes sense. And so when I go into a new relationship, it's not that like I'm, maybe I haven't been fair to all of them and like in that aspect, but I, yeah, I just feel like all my relationships have been rebuilt. <laughs> Well, you're also very much, I think, a serial monogamist and that like you don't like to be 
alone or single at all. And I don't think you're comfortable in that where I'm probably almost more comfortable in that than, yeah. Okay. So after, oh, that's the one we just did. It's your turn. (laughs) It's my turn. (laughs) Thanks to social media, making it easier to keep in touch and people traveling. The long distance situationship is becoming more and more common. Two people can be thousands of miles apart and occasionally visit each other, but this type of situationship typically fizzles out when the visits become less and less frequent. These situationships can be fun while they last, but there's a pretty low chance that they ever turn into anything more serious. So I hate to keep saying this, but again, I'm going to say that like that sounds just like a relationship that may or may not have longevity to it Mm -hmm. I think that when you talk about may or may not become something more serious it really depends on how your like your view on relationships and what that means I think there's a lot of subjectivity there um have I had a long distance relationship Mm, yeah maybe maybe kind of like I feel like there's been like maybe I don't know if I should say this or not, but you can cut it. Um, like, like if like maybe guys that I've met in Nashville or something, mm-hmm. and I get their number and like we talk, and I mean eventually That's exactly it kind of that. out yeah. because okay, yeah, then I think I would well, say yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What about you? Um, I've had a long distance like actual relationship. Um, I dated a guy for a while years ago that was in the military. Um, but a situationship that just kind of fizzled, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. Well, anymore, we are connected to our friends and families on the internet uh, more than we are in real life. With social media being the perfect way to mingle with people while being whoever you want to portray yourself to be. So it only makes sense that people kind of delve into online relationships and most digital situationships begin and end online. Oh, that's tons like, of um, these when I was like 12. Tons of them. <laughs> I was going to say that's what the kids call like e-dating. Yeah. Oh, that there's like a name for it? Yeah, they call it like e-dating or having like an online girlfriend or boyfriend or something. And yeah. um, I, you know what? I have not. I have not had an online where it's like solely digital and I don't know the person at all in real life. And I think a big part of that for me is I have to have some level of physical connection to have any interest at all. Like if I haven't, I have, if I've, I have to have at least met you Right. Or it's really hard for me to just like engage in a lot of online back and forth if I don't know like what's your vibe, what's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's exactly. Yeah. I don't think I could do that now, but I know, um, funny story when I was like 12, I was on the, it was like the Yahoo or AOL chats and I had an internet boyfriend who I told was like, I was 16 and I lived in California and I was gorgeous or whatever. Um, this person went with me and eventually figured out who I was when I added him on like MySpace, and he's on my Facebook friends list still, like to this day. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, I swear. You're send me his profile later. I will. I will. <laughs> That's wild. No, I mean I did that. I did the AOL thing when I was like, yeah. you know, twelve or something, like and like told people I was sixteen, and you know, but no, I don't feel like. Um, yeah, because even like on dating apps or something like that, if a guy doesn't like want to meet up and just wants to like talk on, I just ghost them. Honestly, yeah, sure. like I get bored with them so fast. I can't, Yeah, they don't, they don't keep my interest very long. <laughs> no. The on and off again situation ship can be a difficult one. We all have had an ex that we just can't stop loving and you try to stay away, but you keep failing to do so. There's a lot of unresolved conflicts, but a deep connection. We all tend to seek comfort in someone that you might have a long history with, but this almost always ends. This almost always leads to toxic situationships. The on again, the on and off again is a vicious cycle and the on agains are usually just sexual and temporary. Yeah, I have had this type of situationship with an ex that like we were on and off for... Mm -hmm. 
probably like a year. Uh, this was a long time ago. And so, yeah. And it, I mean, it ended for sure, but I don't think I've ever heard of them ending well. Oh, I've definitely had them. Like I said before, like, it's really, it's always been difficult for me to just like let go. Um, but yeah, just, I'm, I'm not friends with any of them now, so it didn't end well. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. These are just a few of many types of situationships that people encounter. And it's important to remember that these can be positive learning experiences, no matter how difficult they can be to navigate. But if you're not comfortable or feeling anxious or stressed, it's important to let the other person know how you're feeling. I completely agree with that. Yes. <laughs> a lot can be solved by just communicating. Um, to me, the label situationship disappears entirely if both people are really openly communicating. So. Absolutely. Yes. More often than not, it can seem harder to get over, let go of a situationship than even a long-term relationship. Even if it's not an official romantic relationship, situationships give people a sense of companionship and can even sometimes develop feelings of love. No matter how you define it, you can still feel an extremely strong connection with someone and mourning the loss of what could have been can be really hard. When healthy relationship breakups happen, you can take some satisfaction in knowing that you tried and it just didn't work out. But with situationship breakups, there's no closure and it can feel like a missed opportunity. I definitely think that's true. I think sometimes when you're like at, and I have had a situation where this has been the case where, um, when you're at that like stage where you're still kind of idealizing the relationship and you're like very optimistic about what it can be, like it almost feels harder than I had a situation a while ago where there was this guy that I was talking to and this kind of like happened or whatever that, that type where like you're like it seemed harder than like a breakup that I had had prior to that because it was so like out of the blue and it was like, you know, whatever. Anyways, it's like, it's harder than I do think that makes a difference. Instead of just mourning what you had, you're mourning all the possibilities. Like it's all these positive things that you had in your mind that could have happened when it's just like a breakup from relationship. You can look at all the shitty things that happen. When it's just right. And then you're like, well, and now we'll never know. Exactly. Like, yeah. Stuff. So, yeah. yeah. But ultimately, then, like, for the better, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, titles aren't everything, but they are pretty important. I think that one's also subjective. And if, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> if someone really wants to be with you and sees a future with you, then they will put a label on things. I, okay. I'm going to keep reading this and we're not talking about open relationships or polyamory. If you're with someone and they won't even discuss the possibility of being exclusive in one way or another, then you're in a situation ship. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Many people just aren't ready to be in relationship. Therefore, situation ships are more suitable, lower maintenance option, but always remember Someone's effort is a reflection of their interest in you. So I definitely agree. Sorry, I have some thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely agree with the last part of that statement that someone's effort is a reflection of their interest in you. I do think Mm -hmm. that that's true. But I think that regardless of whether you're looking at a, you know, monogamous or open relationship, regardless of like what the dynamic of the relationship is, that it's not having the clear communication. So the labels to me are not as important as defining and really like clarifying and being on the same page. But isn't like, that also putting a title on it? Like if you, if you're defining. No, because I don't think so because Like, okay, for instance, some people would say, I find security in knowing that I have the label of your being your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Where I would say it to me, it is what is behind that label where the true security like is rooted. And so what does that mean? And if what that means is like, I am in love with you and I want to spend a lot of time with you and I'm going to make you a priority and I'm going to be honest with you like that. That to me is a lot more secure 
than somebody being like, you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, I mean. But I feel like even that is putting some kind of a title, like just even. It's not a title. A- yeah, but you're defining it. Yes. By putting like your expert. So maybe not necessarily a title, but defining what it is. Just giving you some sense of security so you know, like, what the expectations are. And yes. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I think when you have people that, when you're not willing to talk about it, or when you do, I think a lot of times, too, in situationships, what you have is you have somebody who's kind of intentionally doing the, like, you know, I'm going to string you along. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just keep moving the carrot or whatever the analogy that you want to use is. I think... Um, like you don't want to lose that person, but you don't want to commit and you don't want to give them the security that they're seeking that regardless of the relationship dynamic, I think is really just stressful. Like I, I don't think I would stay in that dynamic. No, but they're not even willing to like talk about it or give you something like, no, because that just shows their lack of like, they just don't give a shit about your feelings. Right. Or they're not able to communicate on their end, which isn't somebody that I would want to be with or like invest a lot of myself into. Um, Absolutely. Did you have something you wanted to add to it? No, but I just saw the next section and realized that I completely spaced on the dish bish. I mean, not the dish bish, the the Joe Joe Jam. Yeah. Well, that's a that's all we've got for our uh defining your situationship section. So now we're gonna move on to Joe Jam and I will go first because Aaron is still looking. Um Morgan Wallen is about to release a new album that I think has 36 songs on it. I'm so excited, but um before he released that, he has released a few new songs that are going to be on it. And one I've been listening to a lot is called last night. It's really good. I've also been listening to um, the podcast by Holly Madison and Bridget Marquardt. They are um, it's called girls next level. And they're kind of going over all their episodes from girls next door back in, back in like 2005, 2006. That was my show. I loved girls next door. And they're kind of giving you like the insight to it. And I don't know. It's really entertaining stuff. So, do you have your song yet? That's awesome. I don't have a song. So That's okay. I know I'm like, I, I've been listening to more like audiobooks and podcast stuff a lot, but music wise, it's, I feel like I don't have anything new. Um, There's, this isn't new at all. It's like at least six months old. There's a song by Sabrina Carpenter called. nonsense okay it's like really catchy that I feel like I've listened to a lot lately no um, I give I've it's given very like pop catchy but it's like it's a fun song um and it's not new so I sucked today I'm sorry <laughs> no I've literally recommended songs from the 70s before so it's just like whatever you're listening to I think it's fine so yeah check those out guys yeah and now it's time for my favorite part of the show. You know what that means? It's time to dish fish. You better dish fish. <laughs> so for dish fish this week, we just have a few random little silly questions. So are you ready? I think so. All right. Our first question. Who is the most embarrassing person you've ever had a crush on? <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing. Um, and I'll say it. But it, Kirk Cameron. Who is that? Oh, God. <laughs> it's so <laughs> embarrassing. So he was on, okay, well, he was on Growing Pains on the Disney Channel. Okay. When, like, we were, like, infants. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and then he grew up, it's, oh, my God, this is, like, it's it's legit so embarrassing. It's Candace Cameron's brother, um, and he does now a bunch of fucking Christian movies. He did the Left Behind series. And like, I think he only does Christian movies. And he has this like weird. 
oh, that's so weird. I actually muted myself. Like I clicked something. Anyways, he has this weird rule where like he will act, but he won't actually kiss someone that's not his wife. So he'll only act in movies with his wife, which some people think is sweet, but honestly, it's fucking weird as shit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you do know who Kirk Cameron is, you know why that's embarrassing. You do. And if you don't, don't don't go watch his movies it's fucking embarrassing <laughs> and this was a long time ago this was not a recent like into even my teenage you don't years. still have a crush on him hell to the no no <laughs> no but when I was like a kid I remember thinking he was like really cute and cool yeah that's the most embarrassing one what about you uh my most embarrassing is Leonardo DiCaprio because he clearly is 50 years old and only dates teenagers isn't he and like 56 it. now I don't know no matter what, it's disgusting. I hope people are saying like, oh, he's just dating this 19 year old. Like they're not actually dating. It's like a joke or a publicity stunt or something like either way. It's disgusting. It's not funny to like, I'm, so- I'm sorry. As someone who has some experience in PR, that's, that's not a good publicity stunt. No. Um, and I can't imagine that's being recommended to him by his PR team. Like, but what I think is creepy about is not him funny. is that it's a type like he specifically is like I only date like 19 and 20 year olds I think it's one thing if somebody like dates someone younger once but there's like a mix you know like they don't but like the fact that he always targets like really young girls it's and then giving... breaks up with them when they turn 25 yeah that's that's it's... Andrew Tate it's fucking weird but yeah that's mine <laughs> okay if you could have free meals for life at one fast food chain, which one would you choose? Mm, probably either like Panera or Core Life Eatery, which is like, I think those, do those count? I don't know. I was going to say They're fast Panera food. Because they have a drive through right? Because I fucking hate like well, McDonald's that's... and shit like that. Like, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. I think Panera. I like it because they've got stuff that's like good for you and stuff that tastes real good. So yeah, <laughs> that would be my choice. Cause like, if, I mean, if you had to eat McDonald's for the rest of your life, like I would just, just wouldn't like it'd be so gross. My kid would like, love it. Wendy's of, of, the, of those. I feel like you maybe Wendy's, but even yeah. that is like, like the rest, I feel like your life would be shortened so much. You'd like, you'd get cancer or something. Like it's not even real oh, food. For sure. For yeah. sure yeah okay where is your happy place um can you I don't know how to answer this can you answer and then maybe I'll I think our both of ours is probably Nashville you're right we just thank you we love it we thrive there Mm -hmm. like what's what's that astrology map thing I don't think either of our lines go through Nashville but I feel like they should because it's we just we're good there. Yeah. Yeah. I love Nashville. I agree. What is the last show you binge watched? Mm, I have a hard time binge watching really? TV shows because I get distracted too easily mm-hmm. and I can't like sit and watch TV for too long unless I'm like doing something else. Um, I would maybe white lotus i watched but i didn't i wouldn't say i binge watched it um i've been watching a show called harlem it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like eh, i don't know I, I yeah what about you okay um when we we were recently really really sick with the flu in my house so we had nothing better to do and me and my son started binge watching dawson's creek from the beginning uh-huh. and he loves it and i love that he loves it because that was like I swear to God, I've watched it so many times. That's my favorite show. I love it so much. I love that. And see, I never watched that growing up. I don't think I, I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I never watched that one. It was so But good. you, I never watched One Tree Hill when we were younger either, which is another one that I feel like a lot of people watched. And I watched that one like later once it was on Netflix because yeah. Jody talked me into it. That's a good one too. But yeah, that's that's my last one. And God, right. girl, but I mean, that's been forever. Like, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't and, rewatch stuff a lot either, which I think some people think is really weird. I don't think it's weird. I mean, just even I, everybody's different with stuff like that. Like, I, if I really like it, I'm going to watch it a million times. Like, Dawson's Creek, I could probably like recite word for word every single episode of the whole six seasons because I'm a oh super gosh. nerd, but like, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
All right. Our last one. What is your favorite thing to shop for? Oh, that's a makeup. Makeup? Yeah. I love going to like Ulta or Sephora. That's probably, and I'll like, yeah, that's probably where, what do you think? What's yours? I'm going to say clothes. I love shopping for clothes. I need to get rid of clothes instead of keep shopping, but I would say, yeah. I, I like, like, I like going with you to shop for clothes, Mm. but if you're by yourself and you're just like going and trying stuff on, it's kind of like boring. Yeah, that's true. But like when, like if we go shopping together, I do like that. We do have fun when we shop. Yes. Yeah. One of my cats is like clawing on the door to this room, like going crazy. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you can't hear it. Super annoying. Mine was meowing outside the door like 10 minutes ago. (laughs) Yeah, that's all we've got for today. So thank you guys for joining us again. Um, If you are in a situation ship, we hope that you are either happy with it or have the confidence to communicate well and see where it goes. (laughs) Follow us on a subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Join our Facebook group. uh, Follow us on TikTok. Give us good review five stars all the things thumbs up and we'll see you next monday bye bye